Hey guys, my name is Kaushik and welcome back to Lead Code. In this video, we are going to see a, a node package that is passed to it. So, while running our test script, it uh, when and when we have the dependencies, what should happen if one it block is going to fail? What should happen by default to the another it blocks? Let's see what happens. So here I have a describe block, and before all, we have this maximize and implicit time, and then before each and every um, it blocks we are just going navigating to that particular url and we are clicking on the login button okay and then we have the three test cases first is basically to sign in successfully and the second one is um, the negative test case where we are passing the wrong password and third one basically we are passing a wrong email id okay and we are doing some uh, toast validation here okay so let's go to our terminal control j to bring up the terminal and i'm just going to say npm test so basically it's going to trigger my package.json where we have configured the protector.conf.js file okay so all the flows are correct now so of course it's going to run and execute the test properly So first test case is completed now it's running the second one and then it should trigger the third one okay so the last one is running and it's got completed i believe okay so let's go to our terminal and the result is just uh, taking time Okay, so here we can see that we have a success three of three specs ran successfully within one minute, right? Now, let's go to our first test case and what we are doing here is basically we are clicking on the sign in button, right? Entering email and the password and then we are clicking on the sign in button. Now, let's go here and this is the element sign in button. So, I'm just going to make this as login button. Technically, there should be no such element exception, correct? Now, if this first one right so if the first eight blocks is getting failed whether these two blocks will run of course it will run so irrespective of the results uh, based on the first or the last that doesn't really matter here so how many eight blocks we have everything is going to run irrespective of the previous result but in certain cases if there is a there are dependencies in the test case if first it block is going to fail of course the remaining should not run this is a simple test case but in real time project of course we will have like more than uh, 50 or 100 of it blocks within the same specs so if the first or the last i mean first or the second or third it block is going to fail and we have dependencies means of course it's going to run all this and that is also going to fail right so technically we should find a way to stop the execution by default jasmine doesn't allow us to do that there is an option called stop execution on failure but in my case that never worked so i just i was just searching for a plugin and fortunately i got this protector fast fail and it's really helping us in our project i'm using this personally that's why this tutorial is here right so let's see how to use this it's very simple what we have to do is basically first we have to do the um, npm installation that's very simple go to your terminal and just copy paste i will leave a link in the description so you can just take it from there So what this plugin will do means whenever there is a failure in a particular it block it will stop the execution for the remaining it blocks okay now this is done let's go back to the browser and here we have to configure this first we have to do the import as usual so let's copy and go to your configuration file so in my case it is protector.conf.js and here i'm going to do the import first And then followed by i'm going to use this one right so i'm just going to copy and you can paste it anywhere so i'm just going to paste here and here after lunch we have to copy and paste it here okay so that's it so we are pretty much done with the configuration very simple one so in the plugins we have to say like fail fast dot init init is basically it's going to initialize 
it's going to find whenever there is a failure it's going to stop and after launch is basically whenever we got any failure scenario it will create a file so we are just cleaning that particular file that's it so let's go and run now so i'm just going to say npm test or npm run test you can use any of the commands to run your test script and here you can see that we are getting error it says that import is not possible because of course the protected.conf is a js file not the ts file right so what we can do is we can change this to require so i'm just going to delete this one and um, this one and let's store this in a const and here i'm going to say a request and within this we are going to pass this value okay so that's it i think we don't need to do anything else so let's try once again yeah it's running now okay so that's it so import doesn't work on the j so we are using the const the variable name and then followed by the recur it's kind of import in the typescript right now let's see what happens when our first test case got failure right so i'm just going to bring up the console side by side and here you can see that it's waiting because of the implicit wait of course and the test case is completed so first test case uh, itself got failure and that's the reason the remaining test didn't run okay so this is what we actually wanted we don't have to wait until it runs and complete all the test cases and get failed okay uh, so here you can say that test case 00, zero that run and it got failed and that's it it stopped the execution right just in case if we don't have have the fast uh, i mean fail fast plugin let's see what happens okay so i'm just going to comment this one after launch that's fine we know we can skip that now let's open up our terminal and run the test again let's see what happened and how much time it's going to take so in previously it was very quick like maybe 30 seconds maximum now let's see what happens in this scenario So I'm just going to bring up the console side by side so we can take a look on this. Okay, so here you can see that the first test case got failed, but still the program is, I mean, the script is running and the second is also going to fail. So this is the problem actually. So each and every box will keep on running even though the previous one is failed that sometimes it's okay if you don't have any dependencies on the test case but if you have any dependencies then of course using fast fail makes much sense okay so here you can see that it took around 42 seconds but in previously it was lesser than that not even 30 seconds i believe right so this is the use of fast fail and it's very simple but very useful i got i hope you got the idea why we are using the fast fail plugin here okay so that's it for this video as usual thanks for watching if you have any queries please do let me know in the comments and or else you can just ping us ping me on the github community okay so thanks for watching see you in the next one very soon i hope you like this video if so do give me a like and if you're new to the channel kindly do the subscribe so that you will get more videos on the protector and selenium and few other topics as well Tata, bye bye take care Storms we chase are leading us, and love is all we'll ever try.